an absolute mammoth session, in-play ads, tips and tricks for creating a seamless experience with the incredible Thor once again. Have a seat. And if you've got questions for, them, for us or them, where there will be a lot, please don't hesitate if you're watching at home to put them into our Q&A channel. I'll be coming around with a microphone for the main floor Q&A and you can hashtag PG Connects all day if you're on Twitter. So, um, I've welcomed Thor already. I'd also like to welcome to the stage uh, Vincent Ferrier from Tap Nation, Marouan Hassan from Wolves Interactive Digital, Maxence Laurencine from Voodoo, Thomas Jonasson from Gold Town Games Digital also. Um, we've got a couple of people maybe that are joining us on Zoom as well as part of the experience potentially, but I'm going to hand it over to Thor now, who is an absolute god. Thank you. Uh, right, so thanks for sticking around. Uh, we're going to talk a lot more about in-play ads. And we have, hey, hey, we have them both online as well. Awesome. Right, camera's there. Hey, guys. Uh, so, so let me start by briefly introducing the panelists. Uh, we'll do the guys on stage first, so the guys on screen have some time to, to get the tech sorted if need be. But so, Maxence, please, who are you and what do you do and where do you work? Uh, so I'm Maxence. I'm, the, um, I'm a monetization manager at Vodou, uh, managing uh, part of uh, Vodou's portfolio in the hyper casual and uh, driving some growth projects such as uh, the in-game advertising implementation. Cool. Vincent, you look like a tennis player, but no. For Am some I? reason, I don't know, give tennis player vibes. <laughs> yes, hopefully uh, <laughs> I'll give the same vibes for in advertising today. Um, so nice to meet you all. Super excited to be here again back in conference. Uh, so I'm the VP of monetization at Tap Nation, uh, hyper casual studio as well, uh, publisher based in Paris. Uh, a very uh, big French market is big for that. Um, so we're a team of 30 people based in Paris. I'm uh, overseeing all the monetization operation uh, as well as marketing in general. So I'm um, super excited to be on stage here uh, and traveling back to London, former, uh, my former town because I was uh, working for Mopub for two and a half years uh, back then before. So uh, very excited to be on stage with you guys. Yeah, it's crazy. This is my first time in London since 2017. It's like insane. I used to be here so much, so it's kind of cool. Okay, let's go to quickly to the guys at stage. Uh, Thomas, are you with us? Yes. Hello. Awesome. How's the weather? How much snow do you have? Good question. A, a lot. <laughs> Too much is always the answer uh, when you're based in, in the north of Sweden like we are. So tell us a little uh, bit about yeah. Gold Town Games, uh, your titles yeah. and that. Yeah. So we are a uh, publicly traded mobile games developer and publisher based in the, the north of Sweden, as mentioned. Uh, we consist of a small team, uh, 25 people, uh, mostly working from our headquarters in uh, a small town called Skellefteå. Uh, we self-publish uh, arena sports games, uh, management games um, in the mid-core genre. Uh, and that's what we do. Uh, we're also... Uh, really recent thing, we're in, invested in a joint venture, uh, play to earn project. Cool, thanks Thomas. And then we have Maravan, grab that you can see, but there were some issues, I think, tech issues, but awesome to have you online. Uh, can uh, you say something so we know that it works? Yes, hello everyone, uh, this is Marwan. I'm very excited to be with you. I did my best to be uh, in play, I mean, in, in physically available and attending the conference, but unfortunately we had some issues with the visa. So at least I can make it uh, online. Very cool. It's a little bit feedbacky for you too as well, or it's a little bit hard to hear uh, what you were saying. It was a little bit feedbacky. Yeah, but, uh, I, can, I can try my headphones just a second. Cool. I'll talk about your company in the meantime. So Marvan is with Wolves Interactive uh, out of Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, they do uh, really, really great uh, racing games, like unlimited driving, road driving, that kind of thing. Is that a good, fair summary, Marvan? Yeah, actually, this is the type of, of games that we're working on. We have uh, 
currently we have eight titles in the market. They are live and we have five games in the pipeline that we're working on, uh, supposedly to be launched uh, during 2022 and uh, next the following year. Uh, we are uh, focusing on, on uh, developing and publishing uh, games. Uh, we had, uh, this is basically mobile games. We had one project for producing our first console game. It's not uh, finalized yet. So this is working, uh, this is this, uh, still uh, work in process. And uh, we are currently exploring the potential of entering the, the NFT and metaverse arena as well. So uh, we are having some uh, pilot uh, project to, to produce our first uh, uh, play to earn game that includes NFT and will be evolving into the metaverse later on. Very cool. Okay, guys, so let's talk a bit about uh, in game ads. Uh, if, if there's one thing I have learned from being in the game industry is that everyone who is in the game industry at some point in time wants to be a game designer. Uh, and then they realize that they're not smart enough for it. At least that's what I did, but I wanted to stick around. So let's start talking a little bit about game design, right? Um, all of your companies have been uh, running in-game ads for some time. Um, if you were the, the product owner of the game or a product designer of a game and you're like, okay, you're playing it, what would your suggestions, tips and recommendations be for where is a good place to put an ad? And like how, how does also the discussions go about it within the studios? And I mean, it's a little bit different, right? You guys have a lot of third party studios left and right managing that. But could you tell me a little bit about that? We'll start with the guys on stage. Um, sure, so it's, um, I guess it changed a lot also by the category of the games. Uh, if we take example of uh, driving or racing games, for sure there's a constant progression uh, where you have a lot of opportunity to see side road billboards, for example, of things like that. Um, but with hyper casual, it depends. Having a runner can for sure help. Uh, or static uh, screen becomes a bit more difficult to integrate in game ads. So we really have to fill the balance, the user experience on that aspect. Uh, for sure, nowadays um, with interstitial and rewarded video, we take a lot of time of the user outside of the gameplay itself, outside of the time playing. So those in-game ads really become as a uh, savvy and, and useful ad format because they really don't interrupt that user uh, experience. Um, we'll look at different examples. The first one we integrated was uh, uh, Webmaster, like a Spider Master uh, game, which was very useful uh, to integrate because, of course, you're progressing through the city. There are many buildings you're jumping from to the others. And, and that looks and feel becomes very natural because why not in Spider Man you see all those billboards? I mean, you've all been to Piccadilly Circus. Integrating that into the building really makes a real uh, life experience and matching the environment. Um, so you really have to adapt to that experience so that the users feel like it becomes very natural. And who knows, it can maybe even make the game even more realistic because working in a town with no ads versus working in a town with real time ads really makes you feel and be part of that, uh, of that action movie. So those are examples you want to look at. Uh, some games don't match, for example, a couple of our titles, Sneaker Art or Ice Cream are very screen uh, uh, fixed on a single product and you don't have this progression into games into a 3D environment. So the more 3D and space progression you have for the users, for the character to have, the more chances you have to place those uh, billboard, those screens to follow that users are appearing at certain time, different size, depending on uh, how deep is the gameplay and the 3D uh, integration. I would say those, those are important facts. Cool. Voodoo, what have you guys learned? Um, so de definitely agree with, uh, with you, Vince. Uh, so you, you want to create this native feeling, uh, whether it is uh, with billboards in a city or with a balloon or a plane showing an ad in the sky. Um, when you're playing on at the beach, for instance. Um, another recommendation for me would be to also listen to your uh, in-game advertising partners. Um, they are working with a lot of different uh, publishers or studios. Uh, they have more experience than you guys and me. Um, so feel free, do not hesitate to uh, ask them and to do numerous ways and back between your in-game advertising partner and your studios. Uh, Vodou is a publisher. So we mainly work with external studios and we want them to be happy with the product and the process. So another thing is you want this native feeling, but you also want to be as close as possible to, as a, to a drag and drop solution. Uh, when thinking about ads and ad monetization, you don't want to spend 
that much time because in the end what is the more, most important is you know the playtime, the retention that the players are happy and the studios you're working with are happy with your processes. Um, so yeah, feel free to uh, reach to your in-game advertising partners, look and play to other genre games and see how they integrate it and just collect the best you can from everything. Yeah, oh, well, so good. you basically just defined what my job is and that's like find the people who do it well and then find gay people who have similar games and like, hey, look what these guys did, why don't you do the same? And uh, uh, Thomas, you're doing a sports game and you kind of have a static screen, right? You, you're showing the sort of half of a hockey rink yeah. and you put the ads there. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that and like from a design perspective and how that was working? Yeah, yeah. So we have, um, we implemented um, these types of ads only in one of our games so far, and that's the hockey game, uh, World Hockey Manager. Uh, and like you say, the the whole match scene is uh, pretty static to the uh, it's a it's an image of an arena and you see the simulation going on. Um, and what we discovered is that our audience really is primed from media in arena sports overall. So they they to us it's more it's almost create, creating more immersion than than uh, taking away from the immersion of the experience in. Um, in, in putting these types of ads in, in, our, in our match sequence. So what we did uh, just as an MVP test was to implement two digital billboards behind the uh, perimeter of the match. Um, and so that, that's the way it looks today in the, in the game. Cool, thanks. And then Marvan, you guys made some so large uh, internal decision. You have a driving game where you can drive the city. Are there three D? You can do things, uh, and that's the place where you mainly have, I put the ads. And I think it's so because you're use, utilizing what I call dead space that's only just there otherwise. So, so can you tell us a little bit about that making? Back or thoughts around adding the ad units to that placement? Okay, I think I figured out your question. I did not hear you well because uh, the, the voice was cracking uh, from time to time. But uh, yeah, le le let me explain. So uh, we tried different uh, ad format. We tried uh, uh, interstitial, we tried uh, rewarded uh, videos, and we tried banners and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, usually we received uh, some negative feedback from, from users that uh, their experience is interrupted uh, while watching uh, the ads or while, while being uh, pushed to, to watch ads. Uh, two years ago, something we thought about uh, creating our own ads and approaching uh, different uh, companies so that we can sell them some advertising spaces inside our games and uh, we can create uh, or we can have some, some direct deals with them. And then uh, uh, very, very shortly, we, we started to see uh, in-game ads uh, invading the market. So currently what we're doing is that uh, we did the integration with Adverti and uh, by the way, we tried some other uh, companies as well. Uh, the integration went very smoothly. All what we do is that we decide on the spaces that we need the ads to appear on, uh, whether it's uh, a billboard or whether it's uh, a place inside the garage where we show our cars, uh, the buildings, the, the sidewalks, the, the moving cars in the traffic as well. So uh, it's, it's very easy, very simple for us to, to do that using Unity. We, we specify the, the placements or the, the positions where we would be uh, displaying the ads. And then after the, the integration we did with Adverti, it's automated. I mean, the, the ads will be filled in uh, very, very smoothly and uh, uh, seamlessly. So that's, uh, that helped us a lot, uh, providing uh, a better user experience, uh, not interrupting the, 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 the gameplay of the, the players and at the same time raise their satisfaction and raise the, the, uh, the, the ranking or the, the reviews in, in our uh, app stores. Cool. So then let's get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, money, revenue, impact on the business. Again, this is again business conference. Um, Vince, you guys have been doing it the longest. Uh, at least with us, out of the, the four companies here. Um, 
what what kind of revenue impact is this delivering? Like I said in my presentation, five to fifteen percent. Fifteen being a bit of an outlier. Five uh, again, I'm a salesperson. Mm -hmm. uh, how are things working for you guys? Like, what is the revenue impact? Uh, Sort of, what does this additional? What's the impact on your company of this additional revenue stream? Yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> it's very interesting because we first look at, without considering the revenue at all of the uh, in-game advertising partner, we first wanted to observe like the retention impact and is it impacting the other traditional ad format? Uh, so there was a lot of uh, A/B test on that period during two to four weeks, uh, making sure we don't impact the retention, the cohorted revenue users are still the same. We're pleased, very pleased enough to see that it's maintaining the same level, so it doesn't have directly an impact on the user experience uh, as long as the product is well integrated. Uh, so that was quite of a good uh, satisfaction. And then we started looking into uh, the additional revenue drove by those formats. Um, positively enough, we are uh, surprised to watch in the same range that you mentioned, some gains being by plus 4% and the highest we've gone uh, up to 9% uh, on in-game advertising. So it's definitely non-negotiable uh, and, and non uh, we cannot let that aside on the market plus plus 5 to 10 percent is huge for us to redistribute into UA user acquisition uh, and try to integrate that into the LTV of our users. Um, nowadays on our biggest games, our in-game advertising partner are representing uh, up to 5 percent of the total uh, ad revenue of a game. Uh, so for a format that didn't exist before, uh, 5 percent of that share of wallet is, uh, is definitely an interesting part. Um, of course there's a big room of progression, I think those formats still don't have the same fill rate as we can see on, on other placements. Uh, so that leaves us an encouraging room of, uh, of progress for future in terms of uh, ad revenue and share of wallet. But definitely a positive uh, up down and LTV impact, yes. Cool. And then, Max um you guys have at least, to my knowledge, and, and I'm pretty sure, I, well, I don't know everything, but I would be surprised if any company has done more testing than you guys have. I'm always so nervous because I don't want to piss you guys off. You're so big and powerful, so I don't know what I can say and can't say. But you know, you guys have done a lot of research. You've done a lot of studies. The more you can share to the industry at large, of course, helps everyone. But w what have your learnings been, and kind of where are you guys at with uh, in-game ads overall? Um, so, so I, I couldn't tell you exactly what's the. We can say we're not five percent of your revenue yet. That I can promise. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, what I could say is that uh, currently we are seeing in-game advertising kind of um, less intrusive um, banner format with slightly higher CPMs. Um, as uh, Vincent said, uh, we are expecting the fee rate to grow in the near future, uh, thanks to you know advertisers being uh, learned that in-game advertising is now a thing, and that uh, you've got uh, ways to, to monetize through to show ads um, through native feelings. Um, in terms of revenue impact, definitely uh, the first thing you want to do is to test the different SDKs that uh, the different in-game advertising are proposing to you. Uh, not taking, as Vince mentioned, not taking into account the revenue. It should be only incremental. So first of all, you want to not have any negative impact, whether on your playtime, your retention. If you have uh, some, that is mainly due, given our experience, whether by uh, bad uh, in-game advertising integration with the game, within the game, breaking the user interface, or it is a too heavy SDK demand for low-end devices. Let's say in India or in uh, Russia, you can have negative performances. You want this SDK to be only incremental. So before thinking about like running proper tests uh, and looking at the revenue, you need to fix this. So iterate, understand, go to the bottom of it, uh, talk to your in-game partner, um, ask them to change their SDK if you need so that it fits your processes and your expected uh, results. And all in all, uh, that's a really nascent industry. I believe everyone can grow together and learn from each other. Uh, so do not hesitate to open the discussion. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it is a really good point, right? And that's also what, what, what makes what, what makes it really fun, and circling back to my presentation, similar to rewarded video, right? We're not, if we look at in-game ads as a separate industry, it's like, it's not a zero-sum game. 
meaning if I take a cookie from you, you have one cookie less. Like it, is, it is a game that is expanding since there's more money coming in. There's more, it's like when you blow up a balloon, right? It's growing in every kind of direction, and it's very similar there. Um, for, for sports games, Thomas, uh, we like them, of course, because they're a very easy fit when you talk to advertisers. It's super easy to them to go and say, okay, you have an ice hockey game. Well, you know, who likes ice hockey, right? You can define the audience, which is much easier than to do with a hyper casual yeah. game. But with a hyper casual game, then you say, hey, do you want to reach everyone? And say, yeah, well, that works that way. But, but so, yeah, what has this experience been for you guys, Thomas? Our experience is uh, pretty similar to what you guys have been discussing, uh, and we also expect it to, to um, internally to, to become a bigger part of monetization in our games. As we we're launching a few new games this year, and we are implementing um, the, uh, the solution to, um, to our football game as well this year. Uh, and of course, it's, we've, we've done MVP tests, like a proof of concept type of thing. Uh, I, I pretty much expect when when we implement it to be more looking like a pro professional arena sports arena, more like uh, what you would see in, in NFL or th those kinds of arenas, then we expect it to have quite a major impact on on uh, revenue. Cool. And Maravan, well, same question to you. It gets a little bit repetitive, but we, of course, we want we want to hear as well. Like, what has the experience been? Uh, at Wolves Interactive in this regard? Yeah, well, in terms of, of revenue, I think we achieved uh, more or less the same percentage. So it's something between 4% and, and 8%. Uh, so it, it fluctuated depending on uh, uh, the uh, which game we, we worked on and which market uh, uh, we were spending more in terms of user acquisition, which brings me to uh, one point uh, related to the, the raising the demand and raising the geographical uh, distribution of uh, the, the in-game ads. Uh, from, from our experience, we can see that eCPM is, is uh, different uh, from one country to another, which is very logic. Uh, however, the, the area for improvement would be uh, raising awareness about the, the in-game ads across uh, different uh, uh, advertising companies and in, in different uh, locations. So, uh, what we, what's happening currently is that uh, uh, tier one countries are the main focus and uh, this is where we see revenue coming from. I believe that if we uh, exert some effort and if we raise the, the awareness of uh, the community or the, the ecosystem uh, with regards to the in-game industry and the, the, the advertising inside the game, I believe that we can easily achieve 15% uh, uh, revenue, revenue increase. So this is what we're looking forward to. Uh, we believe that... Uh, uh, there should be some some effort in terms of uh, educating uh, the advertising companies about the in-game uh, ads and creating more demand so that we can have more supply and more higher ECPM as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and that's also something that that, that we have to not educate, but we have to talk to the sort of. Uh, game industry about because people are so used to performance revenue, which just again like it works in such a different way. If, if you have a if you have a CPI target of 40 and you can buy for 39, well then you spend basically unlimited and it just keeps rolling. Whereas this fluctuates a bit more, uh, and also reach it becomes an important factor. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna put you guys through one more question, then we're gonna see if we have anything from the audience. Uh, but I would like you to try and predict the future a little bit, look a little bit forward. Um, Particularly when it comes to like this becoming more like general uh, in-game uh, or like rewarded videos, etc., all of that. Like, how do you think it's going to develop? Like, it, will there be mediation, or, or is everyone going to try and build their own waterfall and then give up and do that? Or, like, where do you guys think it is heading? Uh, and let, let's start with the guys on the Zoom this time. Arvan, you you can keep going. Like, do. You, are you waiting for mediation or like just to have that to boost or like what, what, what's the feeling around that? That's, uh, that's a spot on, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, we tried different uh, companies or different uh, advertise, advertising companies for pro providing us with uh, in-game ads. Uh, we, we saw some advantages and disadvantages across uh, the different players available in the market. But the one thing that we are missing is the mediation. So uh, we could only deal with one uh, player at a time. We could not have the, the advantage of putting them together and uh, let them 
uh, compete so that we can get uh, we can come uh, to the best performance uh, just like we're, uh, what we're doing using mediation in terms of uh, rewarded video and interstation ads so that's uh, something that we are missing the mediation uh, another thing that we, we, we believe that uh, it can develop is uh, related to the different formats of uh, the in-game ads. So currently we're talking about um, the, the normal or the, the standard the placements that we have. Uh, I was wondering or I'm wondering if uh, there would be the possibility of having interactive ads or 3D ads, which brings us to the next step of invading the, the metaverse uh, arena, as I mentioned. So uh, I would say that the, the, the development of in-game ads would definitely be looking forward to uh, different formats uh, that would help us uh, uh, have more interactive ads, as well as uh, having something that we can utilize when, when we have uh, the Metaverse games. Cool. Thomas, your thoughts from the north of Sweden? Yeah, my thoughts are pretty much the same. Mediation should be a natural thing to follow. Um, and of course, consolidation, it's an early market still. And uh, we haven't seen the beginning of consolidation yet, I think. Um, and also, what likely is to happen, in my opinion, is that like with all forms of ad advertising, um, there's always a focus on personalizing things more and being more relevant to consumers. Um, and like you said, uh, with our games, we know these people are sports fans in some way, but um, it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how the personalization journey is gonna go for this kind of advertising. Also thinking um, with, all the, with all the privacy, uh, privacy initiatives coming from the platform holder, for example, uh, how how will like traditional personalization is based on single user data collection? How will it work in the future? And yeah, it, it can go a lot of ways. But I think that the business is definitely as a whole um, in a on a just on a on the starting steps of a big journey. Okay, thanks, uh, Vince. I'll go to you and I'll reconnect to something that Marvan said. You guys have been running multiple SDKs in the same game, right? Several providers. Anything you can share from your experience there? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think there is this aspect uh, as those new formats in game ads. Uh, there's still a very little number of players. It's still very new for brands, for performance advertiser, even though none of those ads are clickable yet, so performance is yet to come. So we're mostly talking about brands. So for sure, the fill rate is something that we all look up at improving. Uh, working nowadays with mediation on traditional ad format with 25 partners. Now we're about five, six, seven uh, in-game ads partner. So the best way, if we don't have any mediation existing yet, what I feel we'll have to complement is having different partners either on different placements in the game or the different partners on the same placement, but having different cohort of users. So 50% of the users will only see one uh, partner, 50% will see the other partners. It allows you to help complement the revenue and, and hopefully push a little bit the fill rate uh, on that side. Um, so for sure, mediation will be very uh, useful uh, tool to help us really maximize this, because I think that's at the moment the, the demand that is still has to improve. Uh, that say we can always find alternative solutions. I think every partner is proposing a nice way to backfill the ads. So these in-game ads become a new mean for cross-promotion, for example. Uh, have a fallback into your own games, have them rotating so you can circulate the users uh, uh, between your uh, your own games. We all know cross-promotion is a, a big thing we all try to, cr to crack, so at least this gives us an opportunity on that side. Um, and in terms of future format, we may be looking at the next step of uh, personalized advertising and really integrate it to the game. Um, so we're thinking, for example, I take the example of ice cream that I mentioned was hard to have a standard format, but maybe something we look now, next step, we'll have uh, McDonald's or Ben & Jerry's on the cone itself uh, rotating, so it becomes more of a, a branded game in a way. Uh, so those are things like in the future we can look at with in-game advertising uh, and getting more, uh, more integrated. But, uh, but as of now, yeah, for sure, there's always opportunities to try to maximize those placements, play competition between players. Uh, I think uh, another way that we found out was quite useful to help implement increase that fill rate. 
is now you have very adaptative formats. So it's not anymore just a, a banner or 350 billboard. Is that depending on the demand and the type of uh, campaign they have, they will be able to adapt this ad format. So if it's a billboard on the streets, you can see a banner, you can see a vertical format, you can see a square, um, and slowly we're also looking at uh, enabling videos. Uh, so I think that can really become very, very attractive ad format for a brand advertiser to uh, penetrate further uh, those, those in-game uh, in game placement and, and in-game audience for sure, yes. Awesome. And Budo, final statements. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about performances. I uh, totally agree with, uh, uh, with what uh, has been said by, by everyone. Max, I'm strong. Uh, no, no, no. It's, uh, definitely, we need the mediation. Uh, what I would say is um, you, we want also the tools to, um, to move to a way where it should be almost a drag and drop solution. Um, at Vodus, we created a scalable process that is almost a drag and drop one. But if you want to start talking to more to smaller studios with less people and less tech guys, you know, to to do this integration, um, I think that that could be a blocker because it is still quite demanding in terms of uh, resources. And when you compare, you know, the time versus the value added, you want to be positive, right? Um, and sometimes, given the current market condition, it's not. So you don't want your studio to lose time on this kind of, you know, ad format if this doesn't bring higher value than if it was, you know, really focusing on a product update that will bring a 10% ATV or stuff like that. So definitely just... Yeah, so you forward. mean like alternative costs? Like it, it's not like it's losing your money, but you could have made more money doing something else. Exactly. Right? Just, Scared me for a bit there. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, it's uh, yeah. You can <laughs> always uh, get you know a lot of higher high LTV uplift um, just with product updates and pure uh, focusing purely on the game experience. Great. I mean, if I can complement uh, Max Sense for sure, those are really innovative, advanced ad formats getting into the gameplay. It's totally different than interstitial, rewarded, or banner. So the technical work is even more advanced and more needed. But they are also more they are younger network. So for sure, there's room uh, for, for a much smoother experience, improvement when it comes to technical integration, uh, drag and drop, and making sure all ads are displayed in the best way. We have uh, to maximize, but that's that's quite of an opportunity way to see the, the future is uh, have a great chance and great space to progress for in-game ads, yeah. Cool, thank you. Do we have any questions from the audience, online or in person for this awesome panel? Yes, please, please ask some questions. Anybody? Yep. I'm coming with the mic. Hi everyone, um, just a quick question around what you'd like to see in respect to new formats within the in-play space. Is there anything that you have like kind of on a wish list, like you would like a performance driven ad unit within the native space or a video unit or, you know, what is it that you guys would like to see as an evolution? Guys, Zoomers, anyone want to say something about or did you hear the question? Ah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, sorry for lagging behind there. Uh, I'm a bit slow. Um, yeah, yeah, but like like you guys mentioned, um, more dynamic surfaces, um, video, of course, uh, different formats, and also that and that that's a really really good input. Um, a smaller threshold for uh, smaller comp smaller companies should have an easier time to implement these kinds of solutions. Um, we don't. We we our experience is that it's really a low effort kind of thing uh, compared to a lot of other solutions that we use. Uh, but that's not the case for everyone. Okay. I mean, on, on that side, if I can compliment, yeah, okay. uh, one thing I wish I mean we, we, we're going to is. There's all the question about clickable ads as well on in-game. You know, it's uh, really appearing in different places of the, of the gameplay. And you don't want, that's why branding I think is good here because you don't have to click on ads to, to have a, a good results. Uh, but when it comes to, uh, for example, we mentioned the uh, backfield, the cross-promotion of your own game, 
then that's a possibility where you would like to make only some ads clickable, which would be your own game. So the churn rate wouldn't be impacting users because they will remain into your company cycle. Uh, whereas all of the ads uh, that are from external providers uh, and excellent advertisers, ideally maintain them as non-clickable. Uh, there will be some s small features where you think like in complement with video, of course, you can play on a different ratio to uh, uh, to look at a good matching with everything, you're, what you're expecting in terms of, uh, of performance and user experience, yes. Any more questions? Would you like to ask a pointed question? I know I would. Um, I've got a question for you, and that is the metaverse and advertising the metaverse. One of my big kind of things at the moment that I get asked a lot of questions about because I work in the metaverse is about why is it when we open up a copy of Vogue, we get advert, 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 advert in the magazine, but no one is doing anything at all either in games for long periods of time. Don't forget that a lot of people are spending eight hours a session inside a game experience. So both the question is about the game experience on console or whatever, but also what is the experience going to be like in the metaverse as a whole, do you think? And will it be natural and seamless or is it going to be pretty jarring to start off with? I haven't seen a lot of it so far. From the industry point of view, it's going to take some time mm. uh, because the metaverse needs to materialize, yeah. become some materialized verse. Or so. I mean, it, it needs to be like beyond. I mean, it, again, it depends on how you define it, right? Is Roblox the metaverse? Because if so, like, yeah, we can go for Roblox and do things there. Um, brand awareness at the moment, they thought. Yeah, That's yeah, the and, and then it, we, yeah, but but I mean, then we have the ad, the thing that the advertising industry is it's very big, it's very slow moving, and it's fairly conservative. <laughs> Uh, even if you look at a, a format like rewarded video, which would be perfect for many video advertisers, yeah. I, I would think like, say if you have a movie trailer, right, you're launching the new whatever, like it's, it's such a perfect audience channel market fit, you know that it has been, but it's still like it's taking them time, which is why I was mentioning my presentation, so much of the money spinning around is ad companies, game companies buying ads in other game companies, so like it's, the cycle goes. Um, so, so, I mean, it's yet to be seen. I'm, 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 I don't know, really, truly, because I still don't really understand uh, what the metaverse is, uh, but we'll have to see. We'll have a beer later and we'll talk about yeah. it. Well, what do you think about, um, also collectively, what do you think about other verticals outside of the traditional advertising models getting into this space? So, uh, I just talked about brand awareness, you know, seeing Ralph Lauren, for example, or the Gucci game garden in things like Roblox, that's really just brand awareness. But we want to potentially make advertising sort of better coming from different verticals. And I'm not really seeing any other verticals outside of just pure entertainment, like sports or other games that you can play or other stuff. So when do we think that this experience will be a bit more seamless also? August. Oh, no, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, no, I, I mean, there's technical challenges, there's market adoption. Like, there's at least I don't really. Do you have a desire to see other verticals advertising in this space, or are you just yeah, no, really happy course. with the passive income coming from the regular entertainment channels and the, you know, accelerators and stuff? Well, I think everyone wants more revenues, right? Yeah. And uh, again, opening up more tabs, in increasing the different channels where the revenues stem from. But they highly valuable. How to reach you? I mean, that's the thing. So, do you see yourself going to Paris Fashion Week, for example? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, I mean, all of the. I mean, I, I'll let you. But like all of the companies in our, on our side of the table, like we have sales team. We have Alex over there. He runs around, talks to agencies, brands, Ansu, Admi. Like, there's hundreds of people doing this work. Yeah. But it, it, but it is challenging because either you go to an agency and they don't have direct control of the money, or you go to a brand and then all of a sudden you have a regional buyer for Benelux. Yeah. But then if you want to buy a global, like it, this challenges, right? But they're overcomable, if that's a word, manageable <laughs> challenges uh, from our side, at least, I would say. I mean, yeah, jumping on that question of fashion brands, for example, I think a lot of brands didn't want to be uh, have associated with the forced a bit user experience you can see on interstitial, uh, on other formats, but with uh, native and in-game ads now. It's much more uh, seamless uh, and, and positive experience for the users. 
And we've seen that, you mentioned the metaverse with Adidas, with a lot of brands now really rushing and, and jumping to the metaverse. So I think that is giving us a good way for in-game ads into mobile games as well, because now they feel like, well, it's the same kind of experience, users spending time uh, into, uh, into a, a world of, of gaming uh, where we can see those ads. And I've, we've seen some in-game ad networks already entering the metaverse with those uh, integrated uh, ad format and billboard. Uh, so I think now it's uh, really making the world is a whole entertainment in gaming. So no brands is able not to avoid it anymore. So I think this is very soon a, a coming a more common trend uh, we can uh, expect for for sure. Any more questions? Yep. Here I come. Hi. Yeah, I have a question following up your. Oh, pardon. <laughs> I have a question to follow up what you've just said uh, about the metaverse and so on, how it goes. And grows maybe slow and the Vincent comments about the brand guys getting into that I would like to know what do you think how do you see the picture of commerce relationship or any purchasing power commerce relationship in this field and infrastructure within the game that's a difficult question right but um I, I think it depends a lot on if we're calling it like g-commerce or something like that right I, I think it has a lot to do with the contextuality again if I'm making up words sorry for that uh, the, 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 or the like the contextual part of the game right do you want to be uh, and then it comes also into consumer psychology like are you in a, a, a state of mind willing to make a purchase do you want to interrupt your gameplay experience to go through and do those things uh, so, so I'm certain there's 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 a market for it and there's companies out there doing it as well. I'm guessing maybe you're with one of them, no? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Have you guys tried on any G-commerce or any like actual sales within the game of other product? Like, I mean, basically, I mean, I don't want to diminish it, right? But it basically becomes affiliate in a sense. We're interested on that. That's yeah. what we'd like to know your perspective on it. Uh, I can tell. But uh, we are always looking, uh, you know, to the state of the art uh, technology to offer to our studios. Imagine. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, it depends also a lot on the game. Uh, I'll take again an example of some apps we have, but we have sneaker art or ice cream. Those are really products that are talking to certain brands. And that's when the uh, further integration, when it comes to e-commerce, when it comes to going beyond and selling that product or the opportunity to the users. I could picture very well uh, McDonald's for McFlurry or other type of brands uh, like Ben & Jerry's willing to have this kind of voucher outside of the game when uh, users love to making ice cream, one not driving them to stir with some kind of more integrated partnerships named with Sneaker Art, for example, at some point the brands will see that many users. It's a way to integrate the product directly in the game. So the door for us is open. I think they are uh, curious about hyper casual and, and the target the wide audience he has around the world. So for sure, it's a few matters of time before this uh, further integration comes, I believe. What a great way to end it. Thank you very much. Please give for these guys. It's been absolutely splendid.